Welcome to our review on ionic bonding. First thing we actually need to understand then is what we're talking about when we refer to this thing called an ion. Quite simply, if we're talking about an ion, we are talking about a charged particle. Now the key things to remember is that these ions can either have a positive charge or a negative charge. From when we looked at the structure of the atom, hopefully we remember that electrons are negatively charged particles. So each electron has a negative charge on it. So if we have our atom, which remember has a neutral charge because it's got the same number of protons and electrons in its form as an atom. So if we lose an electron from the atom, we end up with a positively charged ion because what's happened there is even though we started with the same number of protons and electrons, as soon as we lose one electron, there's one more positive charge in our terms of our protons than there are in terms of the negative charges from the electrons. So overall, it has a positive charge. If the opposite happens to our atom and it gains an electron, then it will become a negatively charged ion because it has one more negative charge than positive charges. What we actually find then is if we're going to have a reaction between a metal and a non-metal, then electrons are going to be transferred and they're going to move from the metal atoms to the non-metal atoms. Okay, So that actually means that our metal atoms will lose electrons and therefore they will have a positive charge on their ion and then our non-metal atoms are going to gain electrons and that means that the non-metal ions have a negative charge. So our metal ions with a positive charge and our non-metal ions with a negative charge then attract towards each other and that forms this thing called an ionic bond. You might be asked to draw a dot and cross diagram to show ionic bonding. So what we've got here in this picture then is an example of how we'd actually form these positive and negative ions. So what we actually have then is we have a sodium atom and a chlorine atom. So sodium atoms have two electrons on the innermost shell, eight on their second, and then one electron on their third shell. Whereas our chlorine atom has two on the first, eight on the second, and then seven electrons on the third shell. So what's actually going to happen here is in our sodium, that electron on the outermost shell will be lost. So that when we redraw it on the right hand side there, we have our first shell which has two, second shell with eight, and then those brackets around the outside has a little positive charge in the top right there. And that shows that we've lost the electron to give the sodium ion a positive charge. Underneath with our chlorine atom, we will gain one electron to the outermost shell so that when we redraw it on the right there, you can see that we've got the crosses representing our original chlorine electrons and then there's that little dot representing the electron that we gained from the sodium. So that's why we have a dot and cross diagram because one of them will have electrons represented by dots and the other one will have the electrons represented by crosses. It just means that we can see where those electrons then end up. So make sure that when you're asked to draw one of these that you do have dots for one, crosses for the other, otherwise we'll never know where the electrons came from. And again, we draw the bracket around our finished ion with the correct charge on the outside there. So obviously have a practice at drawing these out and you've just got to make sure that when you are moving the electrons that you draw them as dots for one and crosses for the other.